She has a dissatisfied expression on her face. Doryuka that can freeze everything including the walls, not to mention the entire floor. What's so unacceptable about that? I don't understand. なるほど。それだけの力があれば、もっと上を望むか。さすがに、あれだけの動力を発動すれば、上は望める。しかし、この学園にS-クラスより上はないぞ。私はS-クラスなんて望んではいない。In contrast to Akane speaking with enthusiasm, Kamishiro answers coldly. Kamishiro murmurs to herself without even glancing at Akane. Kamishiro Toko san, datta ka? S class wo nozonde inai nara, kono gakuen ni nani wo nozonde niugaku shita no da. Namae mo shiranai hito ni kotaetaku wa nai. Akane lowers her head in response to Toko's icy glare. It's as cold as her Dorioku powers. As Akane apologizes, she extends her hand for a handshake. However, Kamishiro doesn't react. Instead, she just stares back coldly. Ah, well... To break the awkward silence, I decide to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Obich Obasichi. Nice to meet you. Kamishiro doesn't even reply, only giving me a glance of cold that reaches absolute zero. Her beautiful face is, ma is matched with an ice cold personality. Kamishiro stares at Akane and then unexpectedly proceeds to call our names. Her glance is cold and she gives off an aura of untouchable impress. At least she answered, but she was really blunt about it. It seems like she's not she's just completely indifferent. Do you know each other or something? Having said that, Kamishiro turns back to the electronic bulletin board and with an unchained expression starts to repeat the same word over and over. The students just stare at Kamishiro from a distance. Hey, how come you find it so unacceptable? Once again, I ask Kamishiro. Misa's sensitive voices reaches my ears. There aren't any students in front of me now. So obviously Misa Sensei's eyes are focusing on me. Maybe it's my turn? Hi! Sorry. I put down the new student handbook I was holding and moved towards the Ryoku measuring device. The effects of Kamishiru's powers are lingering. The air around it still feels chilly. I do as I'm told and place my hands on the terminal of the Doryuki measuring device. Right! Trigger my Doryuku? I don't even know if I can, but I reluctantly place my hands onto the device. For the very first time, the measurement began. Misa Sensei drops her pen as she stares at Doryoku measuring device. Oi, oi, oi. The value on the electronical bulletin board skyrockets and the students begin to stir. Ah, this again. I've already convinced myself that it's only natural for them to start a ruckus because... Akane stands there dumbfounded. 
ークの発動はまだですよね Misa Sensei looks around for any sign of my Doryoku. No, not yet. I react with slight disgust to the comment that Kamishira just made. It's not like that. The value of the measuring device stops rising. All the digits are at 9 and the device starts to blink. The auditorium begins to stir with unrest. One might expect me to leave the measuring device, probably receiving praise and respect from everyone, but right now I only feel depressed. Are we finished yet, Sensei? It looks like it can't be measured, anyways. I smile bitter bitterly as I tell her this. Misa Sensei just stares blankly at my face. No matter how many times I experience this awkward situation, I still hate it. Oh, snap. Who knows me? I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody in this school. Who could it be? Who could it be, guys? Uh. A high pitched voice suddenly breaks the silence in the auditorium. I recognize this nostalgic voice from my childhood. That voice, it can't be. I turn around and see a cute girl jumping and waving her hand in my direction. She says this with a smile as bright as the sun. She's my childhood friend, Sumaya Yuzu. It's, an, it's nice to see you again after three years, Yuzu. The same could be said for you. You've matured quite a bit. <laughs> Those three years since seem so short, at least for my childhood friend who has become a woman. Yuzu says this with a kind smile, but I think she's still holding something back. We were together for a long time, but one day Yuzu suddenly moved away. After that, we occasionally got in touch with each other. I told her that I would take the examination for Kasunimori Academy when I spoke to her. But to think that Yuzu also took the entrance exam for Kasunimori Academy. Is that so? I was so focused on Yuzu that I forgot about the measurement. <laughs> But I just said I couldn't, and it can't be measured. Aren't you listening, Sensei? Sensei! Aren't you listening? Oh, God. Misa Sensei cuts into our conversation in an awkward fashion. I thought I would be able to distract her with my reunion with Yuzu. I guess that was naive of me. <laughs> I was just trying to. Oh my god, no. So, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 No, it would attract too much attention. After all, just this created such a fuss. Why? If you have a lot of attention, you can't get a lot of attention. No, that's not it, Sensei. Sensei! Seichi-san wa douryoku o hatsudou dekinai n desu. Why are you telling people this, Yuzu? Come on! God. Yuzu answer for me. answers for me. I'm ashamed to say it myself. <laughs> I would be too, oh my god. Eh? Douryu koto desu ka? Seichi-san no douryoku chi wa keisoku fukanou na hodo ni takai n desu kedo. Oh, let all my secrets out, why don't you? Jesus! As Yuzu enthusiastically says this, voices start to fill the room. What? What? Is it real? Seichi? Uh, yeah. Eh, to... I don't know what to do. 
I've already been measured many times during my childhood, but I never learned how to trigger my Doryoku. Akane is uncertain about me. Well, there's a reason for that. It's not easy, easy to explain, but I'll have to give my story sooner or later anyways, so I decided to explain myself. Even though my Doryoku value is extremely high, I can't use it, so I've made fun of ev I've been made fun of ever since I was a child. I th thought going to an elite school like Kishinomura Academy would help me develop my powers to the point where I would be able to use them. Nobody seems impressed, instead everyone just seems a bit shocked. I don't even understand it myself, but apparently Doryoku abilities aren't something that users acquire through training. Rather, they find themselves able to use it naturally. So to everyone here, hearing that I want to be able to use Doryoku is like saying that I want to learn how to walk. Akane, for heaven's sake, please don't pity me. I see. Well, I guess that's one way to look at it. It pains me when they pity me about, but it hurts a lot more when they don't even understand. Still, I understand where they're coming from, and that only reinforces the reason why I chose Kashinimura Academy. It's not like I thought going to a normal school would be tough. In fact, if I felt bad about my Doryoku, I'd be doing just that. But I don't feel that way. I don't want to turn my back on the possibility that there's some Latin power sleeping within me. So this Oh, dang, I still passed. Woo! Oh, this is the proudest day of my life. Phase,もトライエスに分類されるでしょう。トライエスが入学だなんて前代未聞ですよ。Misa Sensei seems to have mixed emotions about this, but she smiles as she wants, hands me the diagnosis record and enrollment guide. S class, so I'm phase triple S after all. S class users are the best of the best of the students gathered here, and phase triple S is the strongest out of those elite. They're forcing that label onto me while, while bearing knowing anything about me. Oh, well, barely knowing anything about me. I wanted to start at the lowest class if possible, but I guess this is how the system works here. Yes, thank you, Misa Sensei. I don't even know how I can hang in there when I'm enrolling to school with the highest standards in Doryoku education. I guess I have no choice but to try. My best for now. Thanks, Akane. S -class, well, I'll manage somehow. Yeah, let's give it our best, Yuzu. The extremely formal economy. The ice cold Kamishiru and my childhood friend Yuzu. Though the future is uncertain, I was able to reunite with my childhood friend and make a new friend already. Things aren't going badly at all. I can't go back now. I'll do everything I can to prove that I'm competent. Even though I say that, other students still glare at me coldly. Jeez. You guys are just jealous. Whoa. <laughs> Time flew by fast from the interest ceremony through the Doryoku measurements. By the time I was by the time I was hungry, the chime signaling the end of the morning rang. Now where should I have lunch? I'm thinking about that when. Yuzu comes into my class and calls my name. Oh, are you having lunch too, Yuzu? Okay. I stand up, but then I suddenly think of something. What do we do for lunch? Do we eat in the cafeteria? Provided? 
User nods as senior then enters the classroom pushing a large cart. Ah, you know people always take extra. Come on. It always happens. It always happens. As I laugh about who would be so gluttony, Zuzu seems a bit troubled. Aww. I'm sorry, Yuzu. I'm sorry. Aww, oh, now I feel bad. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should, like, go get it for her or something. She hasn't changed at all, still failing at even the simplest of things, even though she's normally such a serious person. I can't help but smile at the thought of having such a charming childhood friend. <laughs> let's, eat some, let's eat outside after you go get your lunch. The troubled look on her face quickly changes to a smile. Even her quick changes in changes facial expressions haven't changed at all. After Yuzu gets her lunch from C class, we go to the school courtyard. Oh God, that looks good. What is that? Freaking chicken nuggets, man. Freaking chicken nuggets, I tell you. Yeah, it definitely feels more liberating than eating in the classroom. We enjoy our lunch under the warm and pleasant spring sky. Hope there's rice in there too. Oof. Broccoli. <laughs> Broccoli's okay. Yeah. I let out a sigh as I look up at the cl clear blue sky. It's nothing. Just after what happened, even your class probably knows my face by now. When we arrived at cl C class to get Yuzu's box lunch, the classroom suddenly turned quiet. They stared at us and started whispering. Yuzu recalls the earlier situation and puffs her cheeks in anger, even though I'm the one who should be angry. I guess I stood out too much when my Doryuki measurement was taken. Yuzu probably declares this. I feel touched by her kindness. Thank you, Yuzu. Oh, Alright, the only way I can get through this is to focus on what I can do right now. Yeah, but for now, let's eat. Hi. I changed the subject and looked at the box lunch. Huh? It looks pretty fancy. It's not as extravagant as Makinoichi Bento, but I'm still impressed by its contents. The main dish looks like grilled mackerel. Around it are various stewed or pickled vegetables. Finally, the rice is topped with a dried plum. Dude, that's not that. Guys, that actually sounds really good. It was, you guys are making me hungry. Even though I just ate, but... Ugh, just stop, please. Huh? Oh my god. <laughs> Hamburger steak, too. Jesus. Yuzu opens her box with glee. Wait, hamburger steak? Are the contents different? Looks like it. Yuzu's box lunch is almost the same as mine, but the main dish is hamburger steak instead of fish. They certainly didn't ask if you wanted beef or fish. I split the disposable wooden choppers so you can slice the grilled mackerel in half as I talk to Yuzu. I'll trade half my fish for half of your hamburger steak. Yuzu gladly agrees and proceeds to split the hamburger steak using her chopsticks. Here. I bring my lunchbox closer to Yuzu so that I don't drop the food. Naturally, our shoulders come into contact as I do this. Yuzu in instinctively tenses up as if being tickled and yelps out in surprise. Hey, hey, don't drop it! I exchanged a portion of my main dish for Yuzu's. My lunchbox looks much more luxurious now. Though the amount of food didn't actually increase, we have more dishes than before. She's thinking the same thing as me. 
As expected from a childhood friend, we've been together for so long that I even that even our thoughts are practically aligned. Oh wow! Oh, how about I give you this too? Oh my god, I suck at reading this. I quickly sneak a green pepper into Yuzu's lunchbox, to, sh to which she starts screaming. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, green pepper's gross. That's what I'm saying. You like green peppers, right, Yuzu? Exactly. What are you doing, Seichi, man? <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. You should be okay with them now. Yuzu says that as she puts pickled plum onto my lunch. Oh, thank you. I am express my gratitude as I plop the pickled plum into my mouth. So sour. <laughs> Too bad. Now it's your turn to eat that green pepper. Yuzu lifts the green pepper with her quivering chopstick as she stares at it and gap grumbles. She doesn't move an inch, but she's sweating buckets. <laughs> she's really thinking about it. <laughs> she's really thinking about it. Oh my god, I wouldn't even think about it. I would not eat that. She mutters something quietly. Hey, lunch is going to end if you don't eat that soon. As I tease her, Yuzu opens her mouth wide and attempts to eat the green pepper in one bite. But of course, it doesn't fit into her mouth. <laughs> Yuzu's eye becomes shrouded with tears as she tries to eat it again. As this transpires... Nanda. <laughs> oh great. Oh, why do you guys why you why you girls walk up just no, no. Stop assuming some stuff, guys. Come on. God. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna leave it right here for you guys, and I will continue it in the next episode. I hope you guys loved it, liked it, or whatever you guys felt about this episode. Please leave a like, share, comment, leave me feedback, whatever you guys want. And I hope to keep bringing you guys this at least once a day. It does take time to make, especially the rendering. Oh, God, the rendering. But I will continue it for you guys. Okay? Love you guys, and I'll talk to you guys later.